here today with uh, Alessandro Sigismondi um, from Turin, Italy, probably, uh, let's say, one of the first uh, photographers of yoga. Um, uh, came to my store, I think, in 2012, wanting to wanting to be a yoga teacher, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yoga student first, but... Yoga student, I mean. yoga teacher, and uh, life had <laughs> uh, ideas, and he ends up... Um, I think how, how many videos you shot now? You said three hundred on your website, but probably by now you. Yeah, I to update that. Yeah, that thing. I think we're say at probably the double six hundred or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> many, many, <laughs> many shoots. Worked with Om. Worked with Triogre in London. That I know well. Um, worked with all, pretty much most yoga teachers and athletes you can imagine. Really now by now. Mm -hmm. uh, Kino McGregor, Luca Glasser, uh, Mark Roberts, to name people that we know in the Ashtanga world. Um, and yes, quite quite a trailblazer and really um, definitely uh, responsible for a lot of the subsequent kind of uh, trend of yoga photography, I would say, for good or for bad. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> for good or for bad, yeah, yeah, you're right. For the introduction, let's, uh, let's start our interview today. So, Alessandro, um, Let's say, what, what drew you to Mysore and yoga at first? What was your first uh, reason for coming onto the yoga scene? Yeah, uh, actually it was my wife, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, not, not only for, because of my wife, I was already doing yoga and uh, also teaching a little bit at that time, uh, yeah. but also because I was really unhappy with the life that I was living. Right. I was mm. working advertising uh, as a mm. copywriter. Yeah. It was a photography you did. Yeah, yeah. I was I was a copywriter. I studied that. Actually, I studied that because I did the science communication. I mean, I did a lot of uh, uh, workshops and stuff in photography and filming as well. So, I mean, that was more my studies, my official studies. But then I was also very interested in writing. I was into anything that was, uh, um, let's say, connect with uh, creativity. But right. I always uh, had this idea of creativity when I always like to... Mix it with something commercial. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but I never had this. Uh, uh, I mean, only like artist idea of creating something out of nothing, like from scratch or like the white canvas or whatever. But I really liked the approach. For example, in advertising. Actually, it's quite exciting to work in advertising because you have yeah. a, you have a, a, you know you have a very precise briefing. You have mm. to stay in that square. Mm. You can't move out of that. And so you have to be as creative as you can in that we all that limits that they give yeah. you. So I find very, very interesting, very challenging, and very good for a lot of years, 16 years to right. be exact. And then at a certain point, it just happened I was not having fun anymore doing it. Yeah. And uh, probably I was thinking that I was writing in Italian, of course, I uh, was working some of the main uh, Italian agencies, but I was uh, feeling that uh, I wanted to have um, a way to express myself that was beyond the words. So images were, I mean, probably more universal. And uh, yes, of course, you know, I was having like photography and filming as a hobby since right. Okay, since so the school days. Had a bit of practice, school. yeah. Mm, yeah, and then you know, I started yoga because, as I say, I was not happy with my yeah, job. Yeah. And I, I think, as many yeah. people, they started yoga because basically, you know, they don't really uh, they feel, you know, the life they're living is not enough. There must be like something else, something more interesting, something you know, <laughs> beyond that. So that was the reason. Actually, I started. I started um, probably being more interested in the philosophy first. Reading all the yeah. classic like, Yogananda or whatever, yeah. and uh, and then from there, as I was also interested in the, you know some the, the physical part, then I found the Shtanga. I said, oh, that's perfect because it's the uh, you know is matching the two sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Does it, I mean, does it, do you still practice now? And does that mm -hmm. whatever yeah. your yoga is? I mean, how yeah. explain what your journey is with yoga now? Because I think you over the years I've noticed in your posts and read. Of, that maybe uh, you have a changing view of yoga and uh, certainly Ashtanga yoga. I mean, could you speak about how, how your views progressed and why that's progressed like that? Yeah. So, um, no, I mean, I'm still very grateful for uh, having started at the 
for having started as a as an Ashtangi, uh, yeah. because it's uh, it's a great discipline. You know, I mean, it gives it's something you know that gives you a lot of discipline. Um, it makes you also work a lot on on yourself. And uh, what I notice is that for me, it's been a great time of my life when I was going to Mysore like every year, and uh, we are so dedicated on that. But then I'm a perfectionist, and I'm too stiff for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, you know. You know, we keep on saying, "Oh, Ashtang is for everyone, whatever." But I remember seeing you in the room. You, you were yeah. like practice. <laughs> yeah, and fine, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You know, I feel like, oh no, no, I can't do that. I'm too hard on myself. I'm yeah, too hard yeah. on myself. You yeah, know? yeah. And right. I, I can get competitive also. Yeah. And that, that are not good things. So I think that Ashtang ideally is to be a pros like you know, in a in a way that is not competitive at all. Mm. <laughs> and uh, let's say if you're if you're coming from a um, more flexible background <laughs> with your body, it's a little bit easier because you can say, okay, I don't have to be that competitive. But for me, you know, this stiff guy, you know, was trying to do all the poses. Mm. Uh, you know, oh, it's challenging, no? And then, you know, when I started, you know, having more, um, you know, work, so I, you know, work and family and whatever, and not being able to come to Mysore like every year and whatever, I was starting feeling, oh, maybe I have to be a little bit more <laughs> soft with myself, you know? And uh, in Mysore, did you find that the photo and the videos came? I mean, when did you, was it literally the first year that people started? I mean, how did that start in the first place? Because it is so mm-hmm. unique. And I mean, your videos are so good. And it just seemed, I mean, I assumed that you'd been doing that for your previous career in advertising. And then you just changed it to the, you know, to floating yoga. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I was, it was, it was honestly, it was honestly easier for me because it's true that I was not doing it like uh, fully professionally before. But I mean, it's, I already had a camera. I already knew right. how to use it. I was like, um, um, and then, and then I had the idea what to do with it. Uh, so it honestly, it didn't start it like out of a uh, strategy or anything. It just started because um, a yoga teacher in Mysore asked me, Who's "Shall that? we make a yoga video?" Yeah, uh, Mariela. Mariela, right? Mariela. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mariela Cruz. I say, "Shall yeah. we make a yoga video?" I say, "No." I, it was like 2012. So I say, "No idea to make a yoga video." I was thinking. I even told her and say, "Yeah, let's make it." And then I was thinking, "Oh." What is a yoga video, you know? Because there was not so much out there that you can we define. Weren't really meant, I mean, if you remember, we weren't really meant to put things out there. And back in the, you know, in the old days, it wasn't really a good thing to put the images. So, you know. No, first, first of all, that. Second, you opened up that whole door, really, in a way, you know? Yeah. You made yeah. it okay, because then everyone's putting it out there. It kind of became the thing that was kind of okay, whereas before it was kind of like a hidden thing, right? Yeah, so. but, 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 you know, for me, actually... Uh, I started that uh, out of my, um, <laughs> I mean, I was a little bit naive, probably, but my intention was to, um, you know, I was, honestly, I was not understanding this thing, that people were like, we didn't want to show uh, the, their physical practice, but they were so focused on their physical practice. Because I, actually, you know, honestly, you know, now maybe it's changed, but at that time, you know, people were talking, about that. Oh, yeah. how is your Duipada going? You know, all, all day we were talking about this thing. So, I mean, we were quite focused and doing and stretching the whole day, like with backbenders and we stuff did, like how that. Did on the shoots? How, how did you find it on the shoots with them? Were there pre stretching and routines? Yeah. It depends. Everybody, you know, honestly, everybody's different. Everybody's different. So, so some people are just, you know, um, you don't even need yeah. much to stretch. I don't right. people need a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so I just uh, try to be very, you know, to adapt to the situation. But uh, I, I, you know, I, uh, I also uh, what I what I learn like in time is yeah. um, like to work with people. I think it's always uh, um, a mix of uh, you know making them feel at ease in yeah. a way that yeah. it's very easy to say. But uh, at a certain point, I think uh, it's nice also to challenge them a little bit. Right. <laughs> you know, it's good to feel at ease, but if I feel just too much at ease, whatever they don't really, you know, 
How, how, would, how would you challenge them? How, huh? how would you do that? Uh, you know, it's uh, maybe you no know, coming just up with there are many, there are many ways. For me, for example, it's not much um, asking to do the same thing over and over. I think it, it, this thing is just frustrating. I think if, if it's coming from them because they're not happy how they did something, it's right. fine, but it's not coming from me. You know, I prefer not to have the, uh, yeah. the perfect shot of that or using something else, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, not, I never ask like, to do this over and over if they're happy with it. I mean, unless really something technical happened, but usually it's fine. Uh, because this is, it gets really, you know, people can get really tired. It's also a little bit annoying to do that. So I'm just trying to work like in a way where uh, we, keep, we try to keep the flow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how can I say, you know, there, it, it depends literally, you know, it depends on every person. Uh, so sometimes it is um, just to say, oh, you know, like... Um, proposing something and see how it's going. If you don't really follow, you know, just forget it. Sometimes it's creating together. Sometimes it's giving them ideas. So I think, I think the main thing is like be able to work with people mm. and, you know, to, to, to understand a little bit what they, what they need. Yeah. yeah. Does it feel uh, very different between people? Does it, can the shoot feel very different between who, depending on yeah. who, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are certain, there are certain ways. Also, I think, uh, um, you know, the main difference is if I work with, uh, with yoga teachers or yeah. if I work with a yoga studio or a brand or whatever, because with yoga teachers, of course, uh, they're usually, uh, very focused on, uh, showing their, uh, either they practice or if it's shot at their studios, you know, their way of teaching or whatever. But I mean, of course, you know, it's just focused on the, you know, they want to convey the, 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 the way they're, they're teaching mm -hmm. or practicing or whatever. Mm -hmm. While, uh, but it's, it's pretty much, especially when it's just a demo video of a practice, um, I know exactly what I had to do because I mean, it has to look good, the, the, the poses has to look good and, uh, and stuff like that. You know? yeah. uh, when, when there's a brand or something, this is when really, uh, or also yoga studio, a bigger yoga studio. You know, this is really when all these years in advertising comes to very, you know, they, 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 they reveal very useful to me because uh, there's a briefing, you know, there's like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I speak for someone from the marketing department or the community. Can you give an example? I mean, just out of curiosity, if anything has ever gone kind of badly wrong in the shoot, because they always look so smooth and so well produced. I mean, what's, what, have, can you kind of just for curiosity's sake, what's gone wrong behind the scenes that you know? <laughs> I know that many things can go wrong behind the scenes, uh, and but <laughs> <laughs> depending where you are, especially if you're, if you're in the middle of the road like in India or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. For example, I tell you something, I tell you a story because, um, for example, something that I remember well when uh, I was going to Mysore, we were shooting all these videos and stuff is um, how people, you know, the people, you know, uh, were receiving this. Yeah. Uh, it was really amazing. <laughs> it really was so funny. I needed, like, someone else to make a video, like, you know, just of the interaction with people. We're really, I don't know, if, uh, honestly, you know, I haven't been to Mizen in the last years, so I don't know if, if something changed. I don't know. But um, I remember I was feeling like... Uh, when there was a lot of conversation going on about the thing that uh, uh, locals didn't like that, and uh, it was something now really. What's he, sh what's he shooting? The people. Uh, not mine thing, but whatever. But people yeah, were yeah. shooting, like, yeah, yeah. And especially Westerners, whatever. And uh, on, on the contrary, at least, you know, what I found when I was doing those shoots. Uh, was people were so so uh, proud and so happy and say, oh wow, see you know like uh, Western and doing yoga, but it's coming from India, and we were feeling proud, you know, that wow. we, were, we were there finding interesting uh, mm. something was coming from their country, mm. and uh, there was always a connection, you know, there was always like exchange of Instagrams and uh, right. <laughs> whatever. And I this this was really like a video that needed to be made like about like the, <laughs> the interaction and the people you know how, how they were receiving the thing yeah. because it was really amazing yeah
a lot of critique these days that it's the, the uh, it's the shining image on Instagram, isn't it? You're kind of taking yoga and making it a kind of cosmetic thing and uh, yeah, you know, yeah, something yeah. that's just a kind of body beautiful image and not something that, like anything deeper. How would you think that? I mean, what's your view on that? As, obviously, as a photographer and as a uh, mm. video I, I don't see that. I think that you convey something deeper, or you try to convey something deeper in your videos. Uh, you know, the thing is, uh, of course, that's um, I agree with that. That that that's said, but it's it's a very easy way to again coming from advertising. That's the easiest way to 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 sell a product because you you just match the product with something uh, that it's um, kind of trendy or whatever at the moment. Could be yeah. skateboard, could yeah. be skateboarding, could be surf could be yoga <laughs> and uh, you just make it like appealing and uh, i mean i never really did that so not because because i i mean i did it enough when i was in advertising mm-hmm. the thing is so i thought that um i thought that uh, in uh, my idea of a yoga video let's say it's like uh, i always try to um, you know, to go a little bit beyond that. So I don't say that I never, I never shot like a sponsor by a, a yoga mat or a leggings or whatever. I did it. I did it. But I, I, I've been very honest with them because I, I, if everything, you know, if we, if you just need, it's like a, some product shots of a mat or of the leggings, or whatever, there are so many other people who are amazing doing that. Yeah. Maybe it's not me. So um, I had a little bit my vision. Um, do you think so, that your own yoga practice or your like vision influenced the way that you photo things? So, can you make the camera show a deeper level of um, mm. a practice or a yoga? You know? That's that's so, really hard because that's even mm. something that um, you know it's not the, the the whole problem with the with the representation of yoga is that it can't actually be be represented. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, because I mean, also, you know, better than me, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, there's already like, uh, there's already a problem with, uh, with the terms we are using because we are saying doing yoga, why, I mean, yoga should be a state, if I'm not wrong. No? <laughs> so, <laughs> state of being in yoga, mm-hmm. not really doing yoga. So you're doing, let's say, the representation of uh, asanas, yeah. That's possible. Representa- you know, rep- doing a representation of uh, yoga postures. Yeah, that's for sure. But anything that is going a little bit deeper, uh, it's made, you know, in a video, it's something you make together with the words, with the music, with the sensation. Uh, in my case, I think I just try, even when I, I like beauty, aesthetic, but I like this kind of uh, raw beauty, uh, this kind when it's not hyper polished. It's not like everything perfect, you mm-hmm. know? So I think this sense of um, imperfections, even, mm-hmm. uh, it's something that I, 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 I believe can make it a little bit less, um, yeah. you know, like yeah. this kind of fake, <laughs> you know, hyper, you know, but glossy I think images. It's something like encourage someone to, to kind of approach... It is essentially what you can do is you can, I mean, you, you, the videos and the photographs are very encouraging for someone to get into yoga. So maybe it's like encouraging the kind of attitude yeah. that you take it in, you know? Yeah, that's, that's positive, for example, yeah. because again... Yeah. And I think you do do that. I think, you're, you know... Many, pe- many, many people told me that, so I think this is positive. And then, you know, I think that if someone wants to go beyond, beyond that and beyond the representation of yoga and you know, looking deeper, you know, they will go. It's not, I don't really feel that, you know, they just stick there, they don't move forward, you know, they will move forward. Yeah. Do, yeah. They, they the do their own explorations. Yeah. You know? yeah. I tell yeah. you, like, for example, for me, when I was more into, I say, oh, yoga, so it's more like reading an autobiography of the yoga and stuff like that. So I'm more into that and say, oh, you know, when I, when I will get CDs and stuff like that. So I was, I started like, <laughs> like being drew to, to yoga, to, to both yeah. more esoteric things. Yeah. But then I yeah. say, you know, but, but then I, because for, to me at the beginning, um, it was uh, the asana part. I never saw anything really interesting to me. So I, I thought, oh, it's something that is more for, I know it's not for a guy, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking stuff like that. And then you know what happened? 
I saw on YouTube, it was, uh, I mean, it was 20 years ago or something like that. I saw on YouTube this video of David Strangson. Okay, yeah. And I say, oh, wow, he's a guy, definitely. And uh, is there some, I never saw anything like that. I, I, yeah. I, I never saw before anything like that because I saw, I always saw something much more gentle in the representation of yoga <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah. So for me, it was inspiring. I say, I don't know what he's doing, but I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I found that it was Ashtanga and I got a good friend Ashtanga class. So, so it came in a way uh, starting Ashtanga Yoga to me also. It came uh, looking at video <laughs> on YouTube right, okay. even many years ago, you know. So, Did you ever complete that circle? Did you ever get to shoot or photo David? Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> we never met. Cycle, we never we met. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, did, we had to do it. Yeah, he doesn't know even. But oh. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, met, I, met his, I met his brother in, uh, in Milan at the workshop, yeah. but I never met David. Yeah. Wow. Something on the list. When we yeah. will be able to travel again. <laughs> Hopefully. I always thought, because I don't think you're, I mean, I think that you have other kind of, let's say, forms of yoga these days. You're not doing Ashtanga practice, right? I don't think anymore. Um, I always assumed that maybe you got put off by shooting too many Ashtangis, you know, and seeing how. <laughs> how no, that. honestly, honestly, uh, not really. It's more, um, it, it, it's something more very personal. It is a personal. Because I, 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 yeah, honestly, I take it seriously. You know, I think it's... Um, I think it's a serious practice. And uh, so when I realized, you know, I didn't have uh, really the time, the energy, the uh, possibility to, you know, to give them, you know, the um, attention that I wanted. I prefer, you know, it's better if I, if I take a break. But then it was at the moment when there was all, the, all, the, all this thing going on. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, I don't know. And still, you know, I, you often put stuff out there kind of like really kind of railing or arguing against the, uh, the kind of confines or rigidity around the whole argument, right? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, honestly, I tell you, imagine, I, again, I tell you how, na how uh, naive I am. But when I came to Miser, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about all these uh, backstories of the past or whatever. But what, what uh, really, for me, was amazing, you know, I met Shala. Was I, I? I had like a sense of um, almost, let's say, of freedom. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, if you think it's my room itself with people like doing different, very yeah. different practices, you know. But really, it was really um, was made me, made me feel really well. Yeah. So I know when you know when some and, and I also found with um, at that time. Uh, I also find, found with Sherrod and everything. I was fine, but he was really, he was not really caring much, you know, about like many things. And so, I don't you know, for example, this stuff, I, you're doing photos, not doing photos, whatever. But, you know, in the last time, probably, you know, I didn't, I didn't like too much. Mm. Some conversation around like right. uh, all the things. So I see, I, I thought it was becoming a little bit more rigid. Yeah, and uh, I say, yeah, I don't know if I'm I'm, I'm not coming uh, to yoga, uh, or at least to Ashtanga yoga. You have to have like a, a, you know just to see like rules and stuff and whatever. You know, it's. And you know, how, how do you feel? Like, I mean, you shoot a lot of athletes now, right? So you, when you're looking at the photography and the videos, you're looking at kind of. I think you're kind of interested in a freer form. That's how it seemed like a, yeah, to express. What is your wish to express in the videos? I think you have a a kind of wish to express a freedom of form or, you know, and a kind of ideology behind what and who you choose to shoot and, you know. Well, but but for me, that? for me, actually, it's still, for me, it still is very amazing what the um, human body can do and, uh, and what, what is behind the human body that is the mind. It's even more interesting. Mm. And uh, how the two things work together. I think yoga is just a beautiful way to show it. Um, and um, I mean, at any level. And of course, when you shoot with someone that is an athlete, is an advanced yoga practitioner, whatever, they have the control of their body. That is, uh, you really can tell it's not just the body or something else, you know, or something else behind it. You can't reach that control of the body if you if you don't really 
worked on yourself a lot. So I like yeah, my yeah. connection to see. And and, and I, I try to shoot. Yeah, I try to I, I try to show. Um, you know, when possible, you know, I try, I, I try to go a little bit um, beyond, you know, just the actual movements and, uh, you know, to show, to show something that probably is not possible to show it, but I like to keep it open, you know, to keep like the people, you know, like having their, uh, I like when people, you know, have different reactions to something, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they fill the gaps, you know, <laughs> What would you say is your most challenging shoot? What's been your most difficult shoots that you've done, and why? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, um, I think I think the first ones were the most challenging because I um, I was uh, I was kind of learning while doing, you know, and um, and so of course when you're learning by doing, you know, you you really have to. You need all your um, focus on that. You know, sometimes you know I watch again some videos that I did like at the beginning. I say I was able to do that. You know, <laughs> at that time because for for example now uh, we're using especially for filming we're using a lot of uh, you know stabilizers, gimbals, stuff like okay. that to move yeah. the camera to keep it stabilized. You know, I mean, it's plenty of time. I mean, technology has changed massively. Yeah, it's really for sure. Right? Put you with drones and stuff see, and uh, 4K, drones, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and whatever. And I say at that time it didn't have anything like that, but I say, oh, that's that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I've ever oh, done it. So like sometimes you know, your early work. You're, you're quite so a, I, proud of the early work. I thought you'd say that. Oh, I thought I look back. No, I mean, no, I mean, you know, looking back, I say maybe from a technical point of view, I say, oh, this is, uh, I'm not that happy with that. But I, 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 I kind of, uh, I realized not so much being proud of myself, yeah, but yeah. realize that the, um, there's some, uh, there's something that happens when you're going this state of flow. Let's say when you don't really think about, you know, how do I shoot this? I do that, and the same for, for the person that is in front of the camera. Right. So this Perfect. is what I, what I'm saying is is that. I like to have a, a very good conversation with the person that I'm shooting before, but then yeah. you know, both doing, we both doing our own thing. So we are both like in a state of flow. We don't like stop like every five seconds. You know, we don't like uh, because this is exactly what we were doing in advertising, and right. uh, in advertising uh, the shoots were going like that. You know, it was like stopping every five seconds, take one, take two, take two thousand. And, you know, of course, the result is that technically, if you see a commercial, a commercial is perfect, technically. But it's uh, usually, it lacks a little bit of soul. Right, you know? yeah. Some yeah, of yeah. are so perfect, but then, you know, it's, you know. So it's maybe really not about learning then. Do you say it's not about, I was going to say, I was going to ask you the question of, well, what have you learned along the way? You know, heck, have you learned? But is it some, something other than learning, maybe? Like, it's just a question. Yeah, of you're right. It's more on learning because to you me, it was more one. like, oh, coming, coming for advertising, we need a storyboard for that. We need this. We need that. Oh, this, I can't edit myself. I need a proper editor. And, you know, all stuff like that. Advertising is like that. You know? yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but then, you know, I say, no, I can do all by myself. It won't be perfect. And again, being a perfectionist, was not easy at first because if you're if you're a perfectionist and say no this doesn't work but you know letting go of that and focusing more you know what what's the message that you want to deliver and mm -hmm. that you know perfection at the end is not that important. What did you would say you have learned along the way that's made your shooting better or made your you know the whole product better? Yeah, I I, I might say. Uh, even if I'm um, preparing a course about yoga photography and I'm talking a lot about yeah. technique as well, yeah. uh, I might say that the technique is something you learn very easily. You know, it's super quick to learn. Right. Um, yeah, that's what we were kind of touching upon there. So what, what is yeah. it? That you, is it something you can convey that you've learned? You could kind of pass on. I mean, technical stuff are easy to learn, definitely. Uh, think that you have, uh, when you work with people, I think we, what you have to learn is, uh, you know, how to get the best out of people. Uh, and, and this is just something that, um, I think you have to, um, it's something, it's a mix of something you can learn and something also you can, you need to have in a way, you know, this kind of empathy, 
you need to like people. If you don't like people, it's very hard to do. And, you know, there are other kind of photography or filming that maybe is better. You know, if you focus more on products and stuff yeah. like that, you know, architecture, it's yeah. fine. You know, it's just a building is a building. You don't have to talk with it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you work with people, it's better you like people, I guess. Uh, I think you are very gregarious and I think that really helps, you know. I think, you know, being an extrovert, you know, <laughs> part the, uh, yeah, a big part of the battle. You just put mm. people at ease. Like whenever, I mean, I've had a whole bunch of, you know, you know, shoots and videos done and, I, you know, I think it, it does make a huge difference who's behind the camera as to how it goes and how you feel about it, you know. How you, you know, not to say yoga is a performance, but how you kind of perform in terms of the video, it, you know. Even the person you don't know them, just the feel of their energy behind the camera, you can feel that energy coming through. You know? So the thing, I can tell you something. So what I feel is that most of the time, you know, I understand the energy person, I try to connect with them. And uh, what I notice is that when it happened that I shot with people that, are, um, that have some uh, technical skills as well, like in photography or whatever, it's been super amazing because they really... Uh, right. Right, how to you know, but they they don't they they haven't told me anything. You know, should this from here from that because they understood I knew my stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they were trusting me at that moment, so we were only focusing on that part in that case. But it was not like uh, shooting. So it was like uh, you know, there are, nowadays there are many people in yoga. You know, there are I mean, there, there are great photographers as well. You know, and I shot with some of them. But you know, but it's, uh, the the thing that I I feel quite proud is that when I work with them, they really, you know, let go of that part. They feel at ease and think, okay, for once, you know, I don't have to focus on this stuff, you know, <laughs> so it's taking care of it. So I can focus on my part and just do yoga, you know? Yeah, Why? Like, so know about the camera as well. Like, um, yeah. I yeah, always feel yeah, like yeah. someone like Kino, she always manages to know where the camera is and smile at the camera perfectly. You know? uh, yeah, 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 of course. She knows, she knows a lot. Natural kind of uh, affiliation with the camera. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Only yeah. Some, some people are like uh, they're performers in front of the camera, and some people you have to maybe coax it out of them. Do you, you find that it differs a lot? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's about understanding people. It's about understanding people. Some people, the worst are the ones that are, uh, <laughs> they want to be technical. So we want to give you advices how to do it. I mean, this really only happened at the beginning, as it happened much um, in the last years. But I remember a couple of shoots, and was, I mean, there was a guy who was really saying, no, because I was doing videos at my time, but it was probably, you know, his time was, you know, like 15 years before. And yeah. everything was different, huh? Yeah. Uh, but he was explaining to me everything. What, you know, yeah. Okay, okay. So now um, you zoom in? Yeah, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if we zoom in or not. I'm not going to ask you what your worst shoot was. But what has been your favorite place in your shoot to be? Not on, not on the beach, for sure, because I hate shooting on the beach because of the sand, you know, right. with cameras and stuff. It's Beach and desert are worst, you know. The sand right. is really yeah, yeah. something that you, you really have to... I'm unfortunate because a lot of yoga people like to shoot on the beach. No, I, I shot a lot on the beach yeah. as well, but yeah. I would say it's not the place that I enjoy more because of the sand, you know. So I always worry, oh, wow, well, this messed up my cameras. And stuff. Um, yeah, I think um, there are several places that are magical. I mean, India is always magical for me. Um, even if it's a uh, mess, is not like the easiest place to shoot, but I always feel I always felt uh, very comfortable. You know, I never felt. Uh, um, I could also imagine there's a lot of spontaneity there in the shoots. Anything yeah, can, anyone could exactly. Walk in. A little could walk in front and make a cameo role. Yes, but I have this feeling in India that anything can happen, but at the end of the day, it will be fine. This was just that Mark Roberts one for life form. That's a fantastic video. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I made more than one with, with him, but it, yeah, we made a couple in India. The, the, sure. the life form one, the mats. The, oh, the one with mats. Yeah, I was in Goa. Yeah. 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 I was in Goa. That was incredible with the drone shot that goes up. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I mean, uh, so India, of course, I really like it. And, um, mm. yeah, I, um, when we are doing kind of shoots that are more spontaneous, of course, you, you might have uh, 
some um, you might incur some problems maybe in, in bigger western cities because eventually you know they can ask you oh, do you have a permission or whatever well, so you have I mean, that do you get for, to get permits to shoot it depends the permit yeah. depends you know if you shoot yeah. again for a brand is bigger shoot you know i might have it i would yeah. have it for sure but you know something we do something really more spontaneous for social media you don't but i realized but i realized something yeah. <laughs> so this is actually in london uh, a policeman told me that in london so and uh, apparently it's true and it works so if you have a tripod is a problem you know right. a tripod is a problem because basically it's like the public uh soil yeah and you're like going on with that and uh it's not you're not authorized to to do it uh, so without a permit is a problem. But nowadays, filming a lot with this uh, stabilizer, with these gimbals, yeah, you yeah. don't need a you don't need a tripod. Right. <laughs> so that that are fine. The gimbals are fine. So you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't say you know I'm totally sure this is something you know. But 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 uh, it it happened more than once. You know, with a gimbal, we're saying anything. That's fine. While while the tripod might be a problem. Tripod stands and. Uh, stuff like that mm. yeah, yeah. When, you're, when you're doing a shoot i mean how do you how do you come up with the ideas do they come up at the time or how much do you plan before i mean i saw i was thinking about life form video again when you're doing the shoot and there's so many little bits in there that you must have thought out i mean how do you come up with those ideas no it's an there's a mix of something i i i, I think about it before and sometimes they, they happen during the shoot the spontaneous so, Mm, yeah, yeah. So what I, what I, what I, we plan before is uh, is maybe you know that in that case, for example, we made this video for life from with uh, Mark and Deepika, and the idea was a travel yoga mat. So yeah. it was just having some travel beats, but then you know we you, some stuff you know I had an idea where to go to shoot it, but then uh, other things you know they just happen. So we can go there and do this and and whatever. So but, so it's a mix. It's always a mix because I, I, I like to keep it a little bit spontaneous nice. as well yeah. because it's, um, you know, it, it can be, I like to have like a, a frame uh, to have something that is safe. So worst of the case, I have a video, but then, you know, to add something and say, okay, this is not planned, but let's do it. We have time, let's do it. Mm. And uh, to add that little extra bit. But again, it's a way of working when I say a more unlearning or rather than learning from what I learned in advertising is like the opposite because there, you know, every second is totally planned yeah. with the cli client sit behind you right. and uh, telling what, you know, how the frame should is supposed to be. So this is a totally different way because, but, I, but I like to keep the both to have a, yeah, to, yeah, you know, to have a, a very clear, not so much, uh, let's say briefing, but let's say at least discussion with the person uh, that I'm going to shoot. So we are, it's very clear what we're going to do. Uh, what is the need, what, uh, whatever, and then, you know, be able to improvise a little bit. Mm. But for example, something that I always love ask is a list of postures. Because people, you know, it, 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 the, you know, mind can really go blank. It's something so simple, but I mean, you say, oh, no, I know what to do, but you know, they really need to have a list of postures that well, possibly they want to, they, they to include. Because, yeah, 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 because, you know, what happened, it happened, you know, again, at the beginning, you say, oh, that video is great, or that photo shooting is great, but I really wished I I had done that that posture. Yeah, I mean we can do it now. <laughs> so, are well, people always pleased with the work, or I mean, generally, like, uh, have they always been pleased? Um, I mean, uh, I think that ninety nine point nine point nine point nine percent. I think yes. Okay. But I, I was thinking about like a case or two that uh, that it was not. Um, they were not pleased. Um, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember a case. <laughs> so it was for a yoga studio. But I mean, I think the problem was not mine, you know, is that she, the, the person you know, really had a different perception of the studio. You know, there were people saying that it was very, like, a, a luxury yoga studio. and was already, like, saying, you know, I'm not sure I have to accept this uh, job because I didn't like the term luxury yoga right, studio. Yeah. So I mean, I said my my bad, but I accepted it. But then you know, then when I when he saw the studio, actually it was not like luxury at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, I say you know, at this point I really had to 
say, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, we, we're not going to do this. Yeah. And then you say, oh, but this place is not, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not luxury at all. It's not premium. It's not, you know, all this thing. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you know that's that's also I mean mistakes that I don't make anymore. <laughs> sometimes the, the, uh, camera, the camera doesn't lie. Yeah. Say, the camera doesn't lie, as they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. But the thing is, um, I in you know in the time you know I learned to um, uh, you know when 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 I have situations like that to say yeah. you know maybe you know maybe I, I you know. I'm not the best the best fit for this job. You know, it's, it's better because I mean, you you already understand it's not gonna work. You know, yeah. <laughs> so um, so I realized that when like in that case, like you know, the couple of cases when you know it was the the client was not happy, the problem was not coming from me. Not because I I cannot make mistakes, but I mean that was a huge mistake was made before we shoot because I had to I had to understand. You know, I I can't you know help that person with the distorted perception or reality you know <laughs> or you know i can transform something you know that needs like a, ma- a magician not not a filmmaker you're behind the camera i'm mean, sure like a lot of like there's so many situations are happening when you're behind the camera that you cannot envisage right like has there any been a situation that's been really funny that's come up like a you know a kind of you know, like monkeys and stuff like that. I mean, especially yeah, in your like, body. Like yeah, monkeys. Yeah, you know, monkeys. Thing with monkeys is they're they're very mm, attracted by shiny objects. So um, if you if by chance you have a uh, you keep open your backpack with the lenses and cameras and stuff, it will go there. Oh no! Yeah, it will go there, and it happened. It it happened they at the visor. visor. They even they even they even open the backpack. But there was a banana in the back. That was a big mistake. There was a banana in the backpack. And then I found this monkey with the legs, with the hands. Imagine, you know? Yeah, but they, they didn't even scratch it. Yeah, right. It was really, yeah. So you got it, yeah. You could take it away, right? I mean, no, 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 it was there with the, the banana. I traded the legs with the banana. They, they could so, be pretty costly yeah. to take if you. If yeah, exactly. But, it, but for, 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 for the monkey, I think it was a good trade, the banana. Uh, I think you uh, got. A, oh, I think yeah. you. I think you made a good trade there. Yeah, yeah, but it was perfect for her. You know, probably she was really not understanding what these lines were. But but they uh, they are really attracted by shiny objects. Yeah. So anything with monkeys in Bali or India or uh, Asia in general, I think it's quite funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, and just to, just to finish up, what 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 do you how do you see yourself going forward? Well, how where how do you see yourself developing, and and are you developing with uh, uh, you know the movement scene or the cultural yoga scene, or or are independent of it now? Or you know, can you say a few things about that? Yeah. So. Um, so the the thing that I um, the thing that I really. Um, what, what, it, what is interesting for me at the moment is that in this time, it is totally different from what we lived before. Yeah, yeah. And I especially mean, in my case, because I mean, yeah. we, we, I was like, just keep on like going around and traveling. And, um, and now, you know, it's the opposite because basically I'm at home since a couple of months. <laughs> so it totally changed it. So I, I, I thought, you know, how can I help the community yeah. like in a different way because yeah. i mean of course i mean we will go back i don't say back to normal because we don't know what normal is at this point but mm-hmm. i mean uh, uh thing will be you know we'll get more at ease possibly and we will be able to travel one day again but i mean i i try to understand if i can help the community in uh in a different way so i did a couple of projects for example i did this uh, we are united by yoga that was basically I asked uh, I asked people on my Instagram to send me to send me a one minute video of their practice at home during this uh, lockdown from mm-hmm. wherever we are in the world. Yeah, I saw that. Very nice. I did it, and yeah. uh, I just added it and put it together. And I mean, the response was amazing. Yeah. So again, it's something you know. Imagine like editing, you know, all these iPhone videos, whatever. But it was so great, you know. And so I understood. Oh, it's it's. I can do something. It's it's not only about you know like uh, you know using my 
skills with the camera, but there are many ways that I can help mm. uh, the, this community. And, and when uh, you out there, if you go, I mean, if you are traveling again, or I mean, how, you know, obviously at some point you'll be on the street again, photoing or doing something. I mean, how would you see yourself evolving with the, with, you know, with the scene or, you know, I mean, what are your projects for the future? Can you say anything about what you'd like to do that, assuming that we get to some degree of, uh, you know, <laughs> you can go more than that. It's so <laughs> difficult. It's the hardest question ever at the moment, think about yeah. the future. Actually, you know, I tell you, I tell you in all honesty, yeah. I tell you that it's something that I, I, I prefer not even to think about it at the moment. I, um, because, I mean, it's, yeah, it's easy to think, you know, we will come back doing what we were doing before, eventually, whatever. But as so many things are not clear and doesn't really depend on us, so what I'm trying to do at the moment is just focusing, you know, to say, you know, let, let's try to take it positively. So I have more time. You know, I... Uh, I do things like, uh, as I mentioned before, I preparing a photograph- yoga photography course. Yeah. It's something that people ask me since years, uh, and I, I didn't have the time to make it. Now, finally, I have the time to make it. Yeah. So to do like uh, little projects like that, that I didn't really have time to make it, you know, and you know, having the time, you know, finally to make them happen. So I focus on stuff like that at the moment, mm. and then in, you know, step by step. We see when, you know, at which point we're, we're going to be. <laughs> but it's, at the moment, you know, if I just think about the future and I say, oh, you know, it's blank. Because I say, what, what I, it's very hard, you know. I don't know yeah, how it right. is for you. But mm. I mean, it's, uh, it's very hard just to think, oh, so maybe it would be in June or would be September or December. Mm. And so what do we do? We just, you know... Um, Relying on something that doesn't depend on us, mm. but also I mean, you, can get, you can get content, can't you? You can get content and then start kind of editing, right? I mean, you, would you see yourself doing more editing work? Like you've done that video, the recent video you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But there, there, are, there are many ways that are possible. Of course, you know, I say it's all. Um, I think, uh, I think, in a way, it. Um, it's also like uh, maybe a moment where the message is more important than the form, than the aesthetics. Because if you do yeah. something like that, it can be really, uh, it can be a, really about the aesthetics so much. It, you know, if I had to edit some uh, iPhone videos, people send me. But I mean, the message can be nice. The mm. message can be inspiring. Mm. So I had to let go a little bit of the perfectionism, or you know, of, uh, doing like things right with my camera. Whatever, mm. and focusing more on how do I want to share, how do I want to yeah. give. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, yeah, this is a nice pause. And, and I, mean, I know that you were so busy, so it must be nice to have a break with your family as well because you were going everywhere, weren't you? Oh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> all the time, you know, in another city every, every day almost, right? You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. For example, for example, I mean, we were just talking about, like, you know, work and whatever, but that's really important. Because uh, I, I was craving for that, or you know, be able to. So I mean, I'm not saying um, everything's good. It's not everything's good. Actually, <laughs> the situation is what it is. But I mean, we can't. Um, we, I think if we try to find the the good thing in the, even in times like that, mm. it's or at least what can be useful for us. I think if the will is there, every situation can be turned into, you know, to aspects of positive. Or well, you can get something. Yeah. You're not saying everything. Get is something. Positive. Exactly. Exactly. We can't so say, you, oh. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. Exactly. You are converting it to the best way you can right now, I think, you know. And, and the course, the course sounds amazing. And when we, I mean, just for anyone that's interested, when will you have the, when do you think, <laughs> not putting any picture, but when do you think you might have it up? I mean, like, open a couple of weeks, maybe. Oh, end of wow. May. Yeah. yeah. End of May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, mm. I, I I can I know that there are many many mid May maybe you know I I have to see now how things are going but I mean mid May yeah a couple of weeks incredible mm. okay well it's been amazing to talk to you Alessandro yeah um, same for me I, yeah he, I mean you can find his work on YouTube and uh, Instagram and uh, kind of everywhere I think you've got a how, how do you how many do you say you've got 90, 90, followers on YouTube yeah so almost that's incredible yeah yeah. yeah. So just 
plug him in and he'll come up and, and he's got beautiful work across many, many yoga teachers and, and, and well-known athletes as well now. And, and maybe later on, uh, you can, you know, shoot, you can go into further shooting of, of different forms as well, right? And yeah, shoot. yeah, yeah. Widen it, widen the parameters more and more. So it's been a wonderful to talk to you. Uh, and thanks for joining me. Thank you for your time. Thank you.